So hydrolases are the most important class of enzymes you'll see on the MCAT. And what hydrolases do is they use water molecules to break covalent bonds. So for example, a hydrolase will use this water molecule to break this covalent bond, creating these two products. Maybe another type of hydrolase will take use this water molecule to break this covalent bond, creating these two products. So these reactions are catalyzed by hydrolases because they use water molecules to break bonds. And these hydrolases use two major types of mechanisms. So one type of mechanisms, you form these tetrahedral intermediates, while another type of mechanism will form these trigonal bipyramidal intermediates. So there are these two common mechanisms used for these hydrolases. So in this video, whenever we're forming the tetrahedral intermediate mechanism, I'll draw it in yellow. And whenever we're forming the trigonal bipyramidal intermediate, I'll draw the molecules in, in this pink. So let's do some examples. So let's talk about peptidases, which is a type of hydrolases. So what these peptidases do are they break these peptide bonds using water molecules. So we have this polypeptide where we have these amino acids linked together with these peptide bonds. So again, a peptidase will use a water molecule to break these peptide bonds. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's get rid of, we know we have these amino acids with their R groups and we have this amino acid residue with its R group. So let's get rid of these R groups just so we have a little more space to, to work with. So again, now let's introduce our, our, our water molecule. So we know peptidases use water molecules to break these peptide bonds. So how do we do this? Well, a simplified mechanism is first we deprotonate the water, forming this hydroxide. So now we have a strong nucleophile. Now we can nucleophilically attack this carbonyl carbon. When we do that, we form a bond. When we form that bond, we push these pi electrons up on this oxygen. When we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate. So we see this is mechanism one. So we form that tetrahedral intermediate. Now the electron will scooch back down, forming a double bond. And when that happens, this bond will break and these electrons will fall on this nitrogen. So when we do that, we form this product. And simultaneously, this guy will get protonated. So immediately it'll get protonated. But now we've done it. We've used that water molecule to break that peptide bond. So now we've separated these, these two uh, these, these two components. So again, this reaction would be catalyzed by peptidase. And there are different types of peptidases. For example, exopeptidases break these peptide bonds on these terminal ends. So whenever an exopeptidase breaks this peptide bond, there's one terminal amino acid that'll be released. However, this internal peptide bond will be broken by an endopeptidase. So this internal peptide bond will be broken by an endopeptidase. However, this peptide bond will be broken by an exopeptidase because it's at the terminal end and one free amino acid will be released. And if you're more interested in more details, this would be catalyzed by an amino exopeptidase because it's the amino acid on the amine end terminal. And this bond would be catalyzed by a carboxy exopeptidase because it's this bond on the carboxy terminal. So those are peptidases. So another type of hydrolases are these nucleases. So what these nucleases do are they use water molecules to break these bonds and these oligonucleic acids. So again, nucleases are a type of hydrolases. They use water molecules to break bonds. So first, the nuclease will deprotonate the water, forming this hydroxide nucleophile. Now, we'll essentially nucleophilically attack this phosphate. So when we nucleophilically attack this phosphate, we form a bond. And when we form that bond, we push these pi electrons up on this oxygen. So when we do that, we form this trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. So we see this is mechanism two with the trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. Now, once we form this intermediate, now these electrons will scooch back down, forming a double bond. And when that happens, this bond breaks and these electrons fall on this oxygen. So when we do that, we'd essentially form these products. And simultaneously, this guy would get protonated. But now we've done it. Now we've essentially broken that bond using a water molecule. So this would be caused by nuclease because we're breaking these bonds in these nucleic acids. And again, it's a similar idea. If we break one of these bonds on the terminal end, releasing one nucleotide, that's catalyzed by an exonuclease. However, if we break these internal phosphodiester linkages, that'd be catalyzed by an endonuclease. So again, it's a similar idea with the peptidases.
So now let's talk about lipases, which is again a type of hydrolase. But what these lipases do is they break bonds in lipids. For example, this is a phospholipid. So lipases will use water molecules to break these bonds in these lipids. For example, we can deprotonate this water, forming this hydroxide nucleophile. Now we can nucleophilically attack. When we attack, we form a bond, and when we form that bond, we push these pi electrons up on this oxygen. When we do that, we form the tetrahedral intermediate. Remember mechanism one with the tetrahedral intermediate. Now the electrons scooch back down, forming a double bond, and when that happens, now this bond breaks and these electrons fall on this oxygen. So when we do that, we, we form this intermediate. Then this guy will immediately get protonated. But now we've done it. Now, now we've done it. Now we broke the bond using a water molecule. So that would be catalyzed by lipase. But also what we could do is we could essentially use a water molecule to break this bond. So that would also be catalyzed by lipase because, again, this is a lipid. So again, it's a similar idea. Deprotonate, forming this hydroxide nucleophile. Now we nucleophilically attack the phosphate. When we do that, we push these pi electrons up on the oxygen. When we do that, we form this trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. So this is mechanism two. Now once we form this intermediate, now the electrons scooch back down. When they fall back down, they form a double bond. And when that happens, this bond breaks. These electrons fall on the oxygen. And when we do that, we form these products. And immediately, this oxygen will get protonated. But now we've done it. We've used a water molecule to break that bond, and that would be catalyzed by a lipase. So it's a type of hydrolase, using water molecules to break bonds. And it, some more details is maybe with this phospholipid, maybe this bond would be broken by phospholipase A1. Maybe this bond would be broken by phospholipase C. Maybe this bond would be broken by phospholipase D. And here we have a sphingomyelin, which is, again, another type of lipid. So, so again, we would have a sphingomyelinase breaking this bond. So, again, this sphingomyelinase is a lipase. It's a type of hydrolase that breaks bonds in these lipids. So, again, this is catalyzed by sphingomyelinase. So another class of hydrolases are these glycosylases. So these glycosylases use water molecules to break bonds in these carbohydrates. So the mechanism is actually a little novel. So this is a completely different mechanism, and it's a really simple mechanism. We deprotonate the hydrogen, forming this hydroxide. Now we nucleophilically attack, forming a bond. And when we form that bond, this bond breaks. These electrons fall on this oxygen. When we do that, we form this product. This guy immediately gets protonated. And now we've done it. Now we broke the bond using a water molecule. So I'll say this is mechanism three because this is a completely different mechanism. It's a really straightforward mechanism. But again, this glycosylase is a type of hydrolase because we use water molecules to break these bonds. So a completely different type of hydrolase are these phosphatases, a completely different type of hydrolase. So what these phosphatases do is they use water molecules to break these bonds, ripping off these phosphate molecules. So phosphatases break bonds and rip off this phosphate molecule using a water molecule. So again, it breaks a bond using a water molecule, so it's a hydrolase. So the mechanism is deprotonating this water, forming this hydroxide. Now we nucleophilically attack the phosphate, forming a bond, push these pi electrons up, and we know when we do that, we form our trigonal bipyramidal intermediate, which is again mechanism two with the trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. Now the electrons scooch back down, forming a double bond. When that happens, this bond breaks, these electrons fall on this oxygen, and now we'd essentially form these products. And then this guy immediately gets protonated. So we've done it. We used a water molecule to break that bond and we ripped off that phosphate. So that's catalyzed by phosphatase. Phosphatases break those bonds, ripping off that phosphate molecule. So again, this is a type of hydrolase. So now let's talk about acetylcholine, this neurotransmitter. So we can use water molecules to break these bonds. And hopefully by now you know the mechanism. We deprotonate the water, forming we deprotonate the water, forming hydroxide. We attack, push the electrons up, forming this tetrahedron immediate. Then the electrons scooch back down, breaking this bond, these electrons fall on this guy, forming these products. So hopefully by now you know the mechanism of this hydrolase, which is specifically acetylcholine esterase. It's a hydrolase that breaks these bonds in acetylcholine. However, the truth is. This is a bit of a simplified mechanism. I only explained this mechanism because now that you understand the mechanism, you'll be able to recognize this. Whenever there's a hydrolase working, you'll be able to recognize it because now you understand the mechanism. However, the mechanism is a little more complex. So, so the real mechanism is like this. 
So we have our acetylcholine and we know this is called acetylcholine because we have an acetyl group and we have a choline group. That's why this molecule is called acetylcholine. This is choline, this is an acetyl group, so we have our acetylcholine. So how do we use water molecules to break this bond? Well, first we have our acetylcholinesterase, our hydrolase. So we have our, our hydrolase. So we know these, these hydrolases break these bonds using water molecules. So exactly, what's the exact mechanism? Well, first of all, we have this really important hydroxyl group. It usually comes from a serine residue, but we have this really important hydroxyl group. So the first step is within the hydrolase enzyme, we deprotonate that hydroxyl group, forming this alkoxide, this alkoxide nucleophile. Now we'll nucleophilically attack, forming a bond, and when we do that, we push these pi electrons up on this oxygen. And when we do that, we know we form our tetrahedral intermediate. Now the electrons will scooch back down, forming a double bond. And when that happens, this bond breaks, these electrons fall on this guy. And when we do that, we essentially form these, this product. And immediately this guy would get protonated by the, the enzyme. So, so now we've done it. So now we've broken the bond. So, so we've done it. The, the, this hydrolase, this acetylcholinesterase, has broken the bond. We broke the bond between the acetyl group and the choline group. However, notice the acetyl group is covalently bonded to the hydrolase. So that's bad. We, we don't want the acetyl group to be covalently linked. So we need to break this bond. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the water molecule comes into play. So, so that's where the, we use the water molecule. So first we would deprotonate the water molecule, forming hydroxide, this nucleophile. Now we nucleophilically attack, forming a bond. When we do that, we push these pi electrons up. When we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate. Now the electrons will scooch back down, forming a double bond, and this bond breaks. These electrons fall on the oxygen. When we do that, we form this product. And immediately this guy will get protonated, so these electrons will, will get protonated. Now, now we've done it. Now we've broken the bond and now we release the acetyl group using a water molecule. So, so now we've done it. So that's the mechanism of hydrolysis. That's how we break these bonds between the acetyl and choline group using a water molecule. So, so again, this is the more detailed mechanism. And if you're interested in an even more detailed mechanism, I have a link below on the chymotrypsin mechanism, which goes into great details on each of these steps and, and explains the, the thermodynamic and, and chemical logic. But the point is, the way these hydrolases work is they use water molecules to break these bonds. So first we attack, forming a bond, then this bond breaks, these electrons fall on this guy. So when we do that, we form this intermediate where the hydrolase is covalently bond to part of this molecule. Now the water molecule comes into play, then attacks, these electrons fall on this guy, and now we form our final products. So this is the real mechanism, but hopefully now that you understand the tetrahedron intermediate and, and this mechanism, now whenever you see in, in a biochemistry class a hydrolase mechanism, you'll instantly be able to recognize it because now you understand the organic chemistry mechanism.